Hey everybody, Kristen from Kristen Bowen Photography here. The other day I put a poll on my Insta story to see what you guys are most interested in learning about. And overwhelmingly, you guys are interested in learning about how to take better photos with your iPhone. And since a lot of us are at home right now, thanks to the coronavirus, this is a great time to enhance and practice your iPhone photography. So I'm gonna give a few tips to help you improve your iPhone photography. The first thing you need to consider with your iPhone is lighting. A lot of people that are not photographers don't think about lighting, but if you wanna take a picture of something, say a delicious cupcake or food or a person, this all applies. You wanna find the best light, especially if you're like me and you like things to be bright and pretty, you wanna find light. So if you are in a restaurant and it's dimly lit, your photos aren't gonna look that great. So even if your house doesn't have the best natural light, it's always possible to find a window or find some source of real light. Artificial light doesn't even, doesn't always cut it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move close to my window in this room that has really great light and that's where we're going to set up our photo. The second thing you wanna consider when taking photos on your iPhone is the background. So oftentimes people just take a picture and aren't really cognizant of what's going on behind the photo and there's something that looks weird or it draws the eye. I personally like very clean, very white backgrounds. So I've selected a blank wall that is just gonna be a nice white background. Also, if you're taking pictures from above, we call those flat lays, you might consider what type of background you want to be on the flat lay. Hello, Flynn. Flynn has decided to join us for this tutorial. Hey, buddy. So I have some options in this room alone. If I wanted like a dark background, I could use the floor because I've got a nice wood floor here. If I wanted a white background, I could use this desk or I've got this marble end table, I guess. And that's what I'm going to choose because I really like the marble in case you haven't noticed. If you don't have anything like that in your house, you can honest to goodness go buy a trifold board from the dollar store, like legit what you used when you're in elementary school doing a science fair project. I take those to all my weddings and I use it as just a very blank background for everything I'm taking a picture of. It's a really cost effective way to elevate the quality of your photos. So now we're going to start the actual photography session. Now I have made some cupcakes just for fun as an example of something we can take a picture of. Now, it doesn't have to be cupcakes, it could be food, it could be plants, it could be people, this all just depends on what you're wanting to take a picture of. But for today's purposes, and since we're social distancing, I don't have any people to take pictures of, so we're doing cupcakes. So I also recommend, if you're doing something that's not human, to have a prop or something to kind of add to the picture. So I'm just gonna set it up, I'm right here, by this window, I'm getting good natural light, I'm setting this up, and I'm just going to arrange these cupcakes just kind of in like a fun manner. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get down low first. So if you can see, the background is gonna be that white um, wall and it's sitting on this marble here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to frame it, making sure it looks super nice. Take a picture. now. You, if the first one doesn't look good, you are free to move stuff around. I usually take like 10 different photos before I find one that I actually like. So I might change the angle a little bit. I might come up high. I might even go all the way above, but you wanna make sure that it's within the frame of whatever you've set it on. Otherwise, it's gonna just look a little staged. So I'm gonna go like that. Now, some of you people like portrait mode. So if you wanna do portrait mode, that's actually a really great, great way to elevate it. And I actually think I'm seeing an angle that I like. You wanna think about lines when you're doing photography. So I kinda of like the idea, thank you, Flynn. <laughs> I Flynn, this is not for you. Go away. <laughs> no, no. All right, stay down there. Oh my goodness. So. There's a corner there, there's a corner here, there's a corner there. I actually love that a lot. So I'm gonna put it in portrait mode. Now, for portrait mode to be effective, you have to be able to be a little bit far away, and there should be a distance between the background. That'll give 
the blurry look. That's called bokeh in photography terms, so you really want that bokeh. So I'm gonna get at this angle. I actually really love this photo a lot. I'm gonna take it, and I'm being aware of my backgrounds. I'm making sure that that light socket isn't in it. I'm going like that. I've got like 10 options to choose from. So that is kind of a basic tutorial of how to improve your iPhone photography. To recap, make sure you have good lighting, make sure you have good backgrounds, and then just take it at a couple different angles and be really creative with it. Think about the surface you're putting it on, think about what's in the back, think about the lines, and then just move stuff around and have fun, and you'll figure it out. If I did not cover something that you know helps elevate your photography, or if you have questions of other ways to help elevate your iPhone photography, be sure to comment below, and I would love to hear your ideas.